I'm so happy. a lot of different meal options that are budget friendly and easy to make. Which is why when I saw this breakfast recipe on Courtney Luna's Instagram, I was like, mm-hmm, yep, I'm making that. Prosciutto egg cups. Take prosciutto, which I would be sure to read the ingredients label to make sure they aren't sneaking any, you know, funky funkies in there. Press the prosciutto or other deli meat like turkey in a muffin tin. Throw a bit of cheese in our prosciutto cups, then crack an egg inside of each. Pop these babies in the oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. That's it. Super simple. And I'm telling you, these prosciutto egg cups left my taste buds cheering for an encore. For lunch, I made sardine patties, and now this is another Courtney Luna recipe, though I've seen her make it with salmon and with tuna, but I haven't yet seen her make it with sardines. Yum yum. And I usually buy these seasoned sardines with the skins and bones in water from Amazon, but I just ordered the Wild Planet sardines from Thrive Market, and you can see how different the sardines look. The Wild Planet brand is like glistening with beauty. Now I can just eat sardines from a can. I will drain the water and just eat them plain and I think they are refreshing and tasty. But this sardine patty recipe, whoo, dang. Next level, insultingly delicious. Just mix sardines with a quarter cup shredded cheese, one egg, some salt, once they're thoroughly mixed up, add the mixture into a greased up pan. I did use a cast iron pan, but my sardine cakes got stuck to the bottom more than I would have liked. I added a bit more cheese on top for extra beauty points with the side of mustard and olive oil drizzle. Dinner, I made meat skewers. I had shrimp, chicken breast, and Wagyu Denver steak pieces, which I told you guys in the last meal plan video, there's a difference between chuck eye steaks and chuck roast, and that chuck eyes are very similar to rib eyes, but they're more affordable, hey? And Denver steaks are also a very tender, flavorful cut of steak that is budget friendly. So for me, if I could rank my favorite steak, it would be a ribeye. But chuck eye being right up there, because I'm telling you, I think chuck eyes and ribeyes are very much the same. And then Denver would be my next favorite steak cut. So Denver's are that good. To make the skewers, I just alternated steak, chicken, shrimp. I was getting so hungry looking at them. And these skewers did come out being one of my favorite meals I ate all week. They could be made on a grill, but I just threw them in the oven at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I melted some butter in the cast iron, mixing in some garlic powder so I could drizzle the goodness on top of the skewers. I am hardcore salivating over here. These look amazing, it smells so good. Oh, I am so happy. Yeah, so this next part's pretty crazy because I don't even know how to express in words how my husband and I are now feeling. I think out of all the things I have made, this is probably one of the craziest things. I am like shocked that I'm eating jello. Which has turned out to be my husband's favorite recipe that I have ever made. <laughs> It'll get there. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Wow, talk about flashbacks. He was eating it last night at 10.15. I was like, dude, you still eating Jello?" He's like, yes. Wow, well, why does it make you smile? Yeah. It's crazy. He's gonna start having Jello every day. The reason behind the Jello was because we wanted to get in more glycine. Muscle meat, red meat has a lot of methionine, and then the gelatin has more glycine to help balance out that ratio. Also, gelatin is really great for hair, skin, nail, joint health, the gut lining. I took grass-fed beef gelatin powder using one tablespoon spoon, poured in half a cup of cold water over the powder and let it sit for three to five minutes to allow the gelatin to bloom. Then I poured in one and a half
half cups of hot water with six grams of electrolyte powder, I used watermelon, and stirred it for two minutes. I then poured the mixture into a glass container and refrigerated it for three hours. This is just making my night. I'm eating Jello. Bryce is playing Zelda. We're living our best life right now. Oops. The whole tray is 40 calories, so even if someone ate the entire thing of Jello, it's a very healthy dessert option. But then on top of that, it costs like a dollar to make this entire tray of Jello. So talk about a healthy dessert option for kids or for people trying to lose weight. Holy moly, I'm like mind blown still with this whole Jello recipe. You're probably gonna hear me talk about Jello a lot more because it's gonna be a staple in our diet. It's literally worth it for the nostalgic feeling. I felt like a kid eating it too. Right? It's literally just making me laugh. If you want to laugh, eat some Jello. I'm thoroughly convinced that this is like super good for you. Just for the, the feeling it gives you. Breakfast the next day, I made Courtney Luna's twisty bacon recipe. Yes, another Courtney recipe. You know, she's a former yacht chef. She knows what she's doing in the kitchen. I'm inspired. If you want to have more great recipe ideas, go give Courtney a follow. To make twisty bacon, simple enough. Twist your bacon. You'll be tempted to wear your twisty bacon as a necklace. Don't do that. Depending on how much bacon you make, bake at 400 degrees for 20 to 35 minutes. I also forgot to put parchment paper on the tray for an easy cleanup. I learned this parchment paper hack from your guys' comments saying that if you add parchment paper, there's less pan scrubbing involved. The parchment paper I recommend looking out for is a brand called If You Care. We've been using this brand for several years. It's unbleached, totally chlorine free. I ordered it from Thrive Market. I also didn't know this, but the same brand, If You Care, makes household gloves. So we ordered those two. Thrive is also where we ordered the sardines, the mustard, the gelatin for the jello. And we also got some ghee, which is clarified butter for people who may be lactose intolerant. Ghee usually is easier for people to digest than butter. Also, I think ghee tastes like a sugar cookie. Thrive Market is an online affordable grocery store where we've gotten organic food, meat, snacks, non-toxic kitchen supplies, even our dental floss. And I do price compare because I ain't about spending more money than I have to. Y'all know I'm a penny pincher. So when I first heard about Thrive Market, they have a yearly membership fee of $60. And I was like, hmm, well, you can't get that past my eyes. But then I did the math. That's $5 a month. I spend way more than $5 a month on gas to drive to the grocery store. And then when I signed up with Thrive, I got a free gift up to $60 with my first order. So that canceled out the membership fee. And then I saved $72 on just my first order. So I ended up saving money and being like, wow, why did I postpone this Thrive thing for so long? In the video description, there'll be a link to thrivemarket.com slash lilycane where you can get 30% off your order plus a free gift up to $60. Don't be silly, don't act like Lily and just do it to save some money. For lunch, I made a carnivore smorgasbord, which is basically for people who tend to naturally under eat or for people who think carnivore meals are boring. There's some more variety right there. Or for people who are trying to gain weight. So for someone trying to lose weight, I do the opposite, but by having different colors on the plate, textures, crunches, flavors, it keeps people eating more food. It's a phenomenon called sensory specific satiety or the buffet effect effect, or by having diverse textures and tastes, it stimulates appetite and keeps people eating more than they would if they were just eating a single monotonous food dish. So if I was trying to lose weight, then I would probably have just one or two foods on my plate. Plus it's way less time consuming and easy. But for people who under eat or for people who are trying to get big bulk, get some more muscle, then by having more array of foods, it can stimulate appetite. My carnivore smorgasbord has here a duck egg, bacon, biltong, raw cheese, steak, ghee, shrimp, chicken skins, and of course, ground beef. Frankly, when I ate this meal, I was overwhelmed. I was like, where do I even begin? But then it was really fun. I don't know why I don't do that more often. It was pretty enjoyable. 
And then for dinner, I had Teton sausages and chicken drumsticks, which I got the grass-finished sausages from Costco, cooked them in my pan, and baked the chicken drumsticks in the oven at 400 degrees for 35 minutes. But to be honest, I do prefer to cook our chicken in our air fryer because the skins come out crunchier, but I don't usually mention our air fryer methods because not everyone has one. Most people have an oven. And then on top of that, our air fryer, I just push a button that says chicken or a button that says steak and out comes our masterpiece. So crunchier chicken drumstick skins in the air fryer, but then there's always the option of making drumsticks in the oven. Breakfast, I made protein pancakes using nine teaspoons pork panko, nine teaspoons protein powder, one egg, a little salt, and two ounces of milk. I know it's probably silly I keep mentioning using a teaspoon, but this is the largest measuring tool I have in my kitchen. And then also, by all means, if people wanna have fluffier pancakes, then add a teaspoon of some baking powder into the mixture, but I always just think it's kind of a mental thing where we think that our bread or our pancakes need to be more buoyant when in actuality, like, you know, baking powder doesn't add more food to the plate. It just adds air into the food. Again, personal preference. If you don't like flat cakes, then baking powder can make them fluffy. Don't slap me! Mix all the ingredients and pour into a hot skillet of melted butter. I then top my pancakes with butter and raw honey. For lunch, a carnivore salad. Yep, uh-huh, that's right. Which means instead of crunchy romaine lettuce, I used pork rinds and then used traditional salad toppings like cheese, bacon bits, salmon, hard boiled eggs, and who needs croutons when you've got meatballs. Then I drizzled salad dressing, melted butter on top, yum. I love salad. Dinner was another Courtney Luna recipe, carnivore cheeseburger meatloaf. You're supposed to use a meatloaf tin, unless you're like me and you live off of cast iron pans, in which case I precisely laid my bacon in the pan in a perfect rectangular shape. Then added a layer of beef, followed by cheese, then more beef before folding the bacon over top. I also added a couple more slices to wrap the sides of my meatloaf put in the oven at 350 degrees for 40 minutes, then drain the grease off, grab a plate, and do a flip -a -roo. pop this bad boy into the air fryer for 10 to 15 minutes, or in the oven on the broil setting to make the bacon nice and crispy. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't be silly, subscribe to Lily, and I'll see you in the next one.